But I just wonder, I mean, have you called the French foreign minister, for instance? No, but they were in the process of arranging for me to go to, go to France and to Germany. Do you know who he is? Um, don't start pub quizzing me, Dermot. Well, don't I mean, start you know, pub quizzing he's me. He's the French foreign minister. Do you know his name? <laughs> No, and I'm not going to start oh, here answering we go your again. questions on this. Well, I'm, I'm really, really, it was just we had that one you were shadow defence secretary on death. Do you know, what, do you know what? What really upsets me right, about your please. attitude to me is that you you do this with me. I don't remember you doing it with anybody else. You know, I do. I, do you, I, have I, you done I, it? To, have you done it, David Davis? Have you well, have you we, asked we, these questions? Did the Sky journalists we, we, have a go at Boris Johnson on this basis? How about Liam Fox? Have you had discussions with David Davis? with Liam Fox. I mean, honestly, really. But quite seriously, can we talk about some serious stuff? Why don't we talk about Syria? How about talking about North Korea? You really want to spend this time pub quizzing me? I won't then. Let's talk about North Korea. Let's talk precisely about that. Do you Honestly. think? Well, the fact that you don't know the French foreign minister's name. Oh, OK, yeah, okay. yeah. Well, what, what about the South Korean president, then, if we want to talk about North Korea? Do you know the name of the South Korean Let president? Let me talk about North Korea. Who's, me... who's been talking about nuking Pyongyang. Let me talk about North Korea, because I think that, you know, with these tests going on at the moment, clearly it is a huge threat to the area, and it's a, th and it's a real challenge to the international community. You know, what are we to do about North Korea? And this idea, I mean, you know, it's not fully fleshed out now, but we are hearing some reports saying that South Korea, obviously cheek by jowl with North Korea, worried about these developments and has contingency plans for a preemptive strike on Pyongyang. I think that we need to, um, yes, and I think that their, their, their anti-missile system is something which the Chinese are very worried about because the Chinese worry that it might encroach on their territory as well. So I think that all these things need to be put into the mix. I think that we need to be careful. I think that, I think that it's right for the United Nations to be talking about further sanctions, but I think that we also have to be conscious of the fact that we might be playing into the hands of the North Korean government who want the North Korean people to be thinking that the entire world is against them and that they must cleave but closely well, to the government. Well, that's a call from Boris Johnson to the South Korean president, whose name I guess you don't know. And the, and, the, and the important point, which is, you know, which is about our security and world security, is that how, how we are going to approach North Korea into the future. All right, but how would we approach And if you want me to South go with you to a pub tonight, and we can do a pub quiz tonight, I'm let's do it. I'm not the shadow foreign secretary. You know, honestly... I'm not the shadow foreign <laughs> secretary. You know, I mean, we're talking about perhaps a global conflict here and uh, one nation, and the threatening, important thing one, is the, one and nation the, threatening nuclear strikes on the other. Yes. I thought you might have been rather... And, the, rather and, I, can tell you, and I can tell you that you, I'm extremely you know interested in this and I will talk Korean about... Do you know what gender the South Korean president is? I, I will... And I, I'm not getting drawn by you into this nonsense. I am pre quite prepared to talk politics with you and to talk about the okay, principles well, we will admit, and the but, threats to the country. But just for future reference, Park Hun He, uh, it is a she. Um, but we will move on. I want to get back to Brexit and this idea from Owen Smith. Let's get back to your party. This idea from Owen Smith that at some point, uh, perhaps after the Brexit negotiations or maybe even during, there should be a, a second vote, be it a general election or a referendum. Yeah. I think that I think that we should start on the principle that the the Tories, because they won the general election on the basis of having a referendum, they don't have a mandate to be able to take us out of Europe on whatever terms they finally right. decide amongst themselves they want to. So I think that we have to have some form of democratic you know, injection of democracy in some way. Do you think anti-Semitism, this, this row within the party, do you think it has been dealt with effectively? We have this today, don't we? Michael Foster, one of the, the biggest donors, a big donor to the Labour Party over the years, he's been suspended for criticising those behind Jeremy Corbyn. He is, of course, Jewish. And uh, Stephen Pollard, the editor of the Jewish Chronicle, writing today, saying when a Jew complains about the Labour the party's attitude to anti-Semitism under Jeremy Corbyn. It's the Jew who is purged. Yeah. I think that um, anti-Semitism in our society continues no, but in your party. to be... No, no, no. In society generally continues to be an issue and obviously it is also, it continues to be an issue within the Labour Party. And it is not something that we can be complacent about or we must always make sure that we are, we are prepared to confront and stamp out whenever it raises its ugly head. And whether that's racism, whether that's anti-Semitism or sexism, you know, I think that we absolutely must call it But it's interesting it you're saying there is more to be done within the Labour For the Party. Most, there is always more to be done. There is always more to be done, and do you know what? There's certainly a lot more to be done by the Tories, and, and I certainly think that sometimes when it comes to sexism, some Sky presenters need to look at themselves too. 
I really do. It really, it really upsets me that every time I come on here, you do another pub quiz with well, me because well, you me, do well, not well, do well, it with anybody me, else. Well, and let me address, I do think that let, it's passionate. Let me address it, Emily. Thought it, it, it's not because you are the shadow foreign secretary. Yeah, right. And this was about the French foreign minister, Jean-Marc Ayrault, well, who Boris Johnson has let's, met. Let's now, take this has offline because I've got a lot times. to say to you, and I don't think a lot of it could, ought to be okay. broadcast. Emily Thornby, <laughs> for the time being, thank you very much indeed, and more than keen to have that discussion on air if you, if you like. Well, yeah. I mean, it's it's a question way back when when. Oh, I can't even remember when Mr. Johnson, Alan Johnson, was uh, was Shadow Chancellor. We had discussions about the rate of national insurance, which which he didn't know, and he should have known. I would have suspect as a Shadow Chancellor. It's Alan Johnson. I'll, I'll just leave it there with you, Emily Thornberry. I'm sure you'll get the last word, of course. And you're watching Manhattan on Sky News.